Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all-new Walmart on Surf Gen 3 7-inch Android tablet. Now recently I posted a video taking a look at the new Amazon Fire HD 7, and I actually had no clue that Walmart was going to be releasing their new line of tablets, but I recently went there, saw them on the shelf, and figured I'd go ahead and pick one up. These are coming in at the exact same price as the Amazon Fire tablet, $59.99, but around Black Friday, you're definitely going to see a really steep discount on these, and I figured I'd go ahead and pick one up just to take a look at it. It does have an upgraded CPU from their older 7-inch Surf, so we might get a little better performance. And it seems that every year around the same time that Amazon releases their 7-inch tablets, Walmart releases their new online. And real quick, they do offer different colors on their website. I wasn't aware of this when I picked it up in store, but if you do order it from walmart.com, you can pick it up in kind of a that yellowish green on color, purple, blue, or charcoal. And the charcoal one is the one that you'll probably find in store. So they've also got a 10.1 inch with the same exact CPU, but I went with the cheaper model here, the seven inch. It's got a mono speaker and USB type C for charging and sync. We've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack up here and a micro SD card slot. Now they claim that this will work up to a one terabyte card. I've only tested a 128 in here, but for a seven inch tablet, I think that's plenty of storage. And when it comes to the basic specs, for the CPU, we've got a MediaTek MT8168B. This is quad core A55 CPU running at two gigahertz. And we've got a Mali G52 MC2 GPU. In the new Amazon Fire, it's an MC1, so it's a single core GPU. With this, we get two cores, which isn't much better, but it does make a bit of a difference. Two gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage in the base model, plus micro SD card support. A 7 inch 1024 by 600 IPS display. Does have AC Wi Fi, so we can pick up that 5 gigahertz network. Bluetooth 5.0, and this is running Android Go 11, so it is a lighter weight version of Android, but it's true Android. We do get Google Play right out of the box, and with Android Go, we do get regular security updates, so that's definitely a big plus when it comes to this tablet versus the Fire 7. So obviously, performance on something like this isn't going to come close to the more expensive Samsung tablets, but we're working with a $60 tablet here, and for what we have, I was actually really impressed by how smooth everything was. It's not the fastest tablet in the world, given that we have that older 2 GHz CPU, but it is paired up with Android Go, which is a much lighter weight Android version. And you know, loading up Google Play, loading up web pages and everything like that does work much better than I expected it to on this tablet. And another thing I noticed was YouTube video playback is actually at 60 FPS. On the new Fire 7, it's stuck at 30. But with this, we can do 60 FPS, 720p playback, and we probably could go a bit higher, but that screen resolution is already basically maxed out at 720p. But I've got stats for nerds on screen, zero drop frames, 720p, 60 FPS. And with the built-in 5 GHz Wi-Fi, everything loads up really quickly. It would have been nice to see Wi-Fi 6, but I completely understand what they're doing here. Moving over to some Android gaming, wasn't expecting anything spectacular here, but it does handle stuff like Minecraft, and especially 2D games. So like Among Us, Dead Cells, and all of your favorite little 2D games are going to function just fine on this 2 GHz CPU. But with Minecraft, I did have to turn fancy graphics off, and I've also got the chunks set to 6. We could go down one more, but it doesn't make much of a difference going from 5 to 6. I've got a couple more games to test here. First one is Among Us. Not a super hard game to run, but that's kind of what you want on a tablet like this. Uh, touch screens working just fine. You can connect a Bluetooth controller. Among Us for Android now natively supports controllers, which is a big plus. And the other one I tested here was Dead Cells. So this is actually one of my favorite little indie games. It's been ported over from PC to Android. And it is playable on this unit. I'm using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth right now. Another one of those games that natively supports controllers. So when it comes to 2D gaming, you should be good to go on this device. 3D, not so much. But one of the main things I wanted to test on this was some emulation. And first up, we've got some GBA. I'm using RetroArch here, and when it comes to the lower end stuff, this tablet has more than enough power. You want to do some Neo Geo, some FBA, NES, SNES, PC Engine, this will run it. I mean, it's going to run it at full speed. You're not going to have any trouble with it. Along with Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and as you can see here, Game Boy Advance. 
But basically, what I wanted to see was how high we could take this. What kind of emulators could we run on this device? And when it comes to NDS or Nintendo DS, the Drastic emulator is really the way to go. I tested a few games here, didn't run into any issues whatsoever. This emulator just works really well on basically everything that I've tested it on. And as you can see, I'm in portrait mode right now, so we've got that top and bottom screen, but you can set this up any way you'd like, and you can connect a physical controller to it if you want to. I just wanted to show it off like this with the touch screen controls. Moving over to some PlayStation 1 emulation using RetroArch with the PC SX Rearm Core. One of my favorite rally games, even to this day, this is Colin McRae Rally 2.0. We're at 60 FPS, and I also tested Bloody Roar 2, one of those games that's a bit harder to emulate for lower end systems, but this will handle it at 60 FPS, no problem at all. I also wanted to test a little bit of N64 emulation, and with the lighter or the easier to run games using Mupin64 plus FZ, they run pretty decently. Got a few hiccups every once in a while, think it comes down to that GPU driver. But overall, stuff like Mario 64, we've got Diddy Kong Racing, Mario Kart, all of that's going to run really well on this device. But there are some harder to emulate games that might give you a few issues, especially using this emulator like 007. At first I got really excited about it, but then I got some more NPCs on screen and we got a lot of slowdown. Now there is a chance that the Moop N64 core in RetroArch might function better, but I've always had really good luck with the standalone emulator. Checking out some Dreamcast emulation, and uh, you know, I was actually a little disappointed with this. I'm using the Redream emulator right now with Marvel vs. Capcom 2, running pretty decently. I mean, this is definitely playable. I also tested out Soul Calibur, and a lot of the fighting games are going to be fully playable or really easy to emulate games. But even moving over to something like Sonic Adventure 2, it had a lot of slowdowns. And with this, I'm using the premium version. I'm at the lowest resolution with Redream. I also went through and I tested Flycast and I was getting even worse performance. Now we could take the resolution way down in Flycast and get much better performance with games like Sonic Adventure 2, or you could turn on Frame Skip, but you know, I was really hoping that we'd get some decent performance out of a lot of these Dreamcast games. But about as high as we can go with this little tablet here is PSP emulation, and even then we will run into some limitations with the harder to emulate games. Like God of War and Tekken 6, those were games I did have to turn on frame skip at 1x, but there's a lot of easier to emulate PSP games that'll be fully playable on this. Another one I tested here was Daxter. This is one of those games that does run at 30 FPS, runs really well on this device. But the harder to emulate games for PSP are kind of going to be a no-go unless you don't mind using frame skip. And that's something I really don't like using. But I did want to show you Tekken 6 running here. So this is with frame skip set to 1, we're at 1x resolution. And this was really the only way I could get it to run at a decently smooth frame rate. Even though we've got frame skip on, it's running at 30 FPS. Without it, we're around 55. And the sound is all over the place with frame skip off. So in the end, I personally think that the Surf Gen 3 is better than the new Amazon Fire 7 tablet, but they're still very low-end tablets. Now if you're looking for something for 720p, 60fps playback, and some lower-end emulation, then this actually might be a good choice when it goes on sale. As we know, these on tablets do go on sale quite a lot. The next sale that I can really think of, you know, major sale would be but Black Friday. But in between Friday. there, I'm sure we'll see some kind of discount on this. And if it drops to $29.99, then this actually might be a pretty decent deal if you know what you're getting into. But at $59.99, I still think these are a little overpriced. And when it comes to the 10.1 inch, the new Gen 3, it's got the same CPU and same amount of RAM. It's just got dual speakers and a bigger screen, so you will see the same kind of performance. You actually might see a little less performance out of it given the resolution of that bigger screen. But this was something that caught my eye at my local Walmart, so I figured I'd go ahead and pick it up and do a quick video. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If for any reason you want to see anything else running on this tablet, let me know in the comments below. But keep in mind, this isn't going to handle Genshin Impact, Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG, or Apex Legends. 2D games will work pretty decently on this, but that's about the extent when it comes to Android gaming. Was definitely hoping for a little better performance in the higher end emulators, but I guess you kind of get what you pay for. If you have any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.